It's time to crack out the laser machine for what might be the most creative way I've ever made custom phones. In the past, we've used this machine to remove and replace the back glass on several iPhones in order to refurbish the phone, and even mix and match parts on this iPhone XR to make it red and black. But this time, we are going where no custom phone has gone before, a fully custom designed back panel using color graphics. To complete such a task, I'll need one or more housings to repurpose. I'll start with an iPhone housing first, as it'll be a much harder process than on a Samsung or other similar Android phone. Luckily, I have a few cracked housings left over from previous repair videos. In my case, I'll be using an iPhone XS Max housing, but any glass iPhone housings will also work. I'll start at the computer where I'll bring up the template for the phone. This laser machine came from Rewa Technology and came supplied with all the software and templates designed for removing the backs from iPhones. Once the correct template is selected, you can see all the areas in black. These areas will be targeted by the laser. Therefore, anything in white won't be, such as the cameras and wireless charging coil. Over at the laser machine, I'll calibrate the focus. This is done by placing the phone under the focusing probe, where the machine will then auto-calibrate. It's now time to place the phone onto the machine and align the template. It's important that alignment is done correctly, or the laser can burn into the edges, ruining the polished frame. Once the process begins, it takes about 5 to 8 minutes for the laser to do two passes. This whole process is necessary as the adhesive Apple uses is so strong, the lasers are required to burn it away. This demonstrates the complexity of iPhone repairs. For the end consumer, if you break the back of your iPhone, there isn't an easy fix. Using lasers is so expensive and specialized, but replacing the housing as a whole is too complicated for most technicians. With the two passes completed, it's time to separate the glass. Despite using the high-powered laser, we'll still need to pry it away. I find it's best to start on the inside, around the wireless charging area, using my jimmy tool to break loose some of the glue. Back on the outside, I can continue flaking away the glass shards. The more cracks there are in the glass, the harder it will be to remove. The most difficult area is around the camera lens. The glass is seated under the camera frame. The back glass has to be smashed in order for it to come out. With all of the glass removed, I'll place the phone back into the laser machine to give it another two passes. This is just to further soften the adhesive that was once holding the back glass on. This will allow us to remove the remaining adhesive and prep the frame for a new glass panel. After four total passes, the once concrete glue is now burnt to a crisp and can be flaked away using, once again, my jimmy tool. Once the frame is cleaned up, it's come time for the new glass panel. I ordered several blank sheets for $1 each. Once unpacked, I can place one on top of the frame, ready to be customized. So I jumped online to find some vector graphics I'm wanting on the back of these housings. It's important to use vector files as they can be enlarged as much as needed without ever getting blurry. PNG files will result in a blurry, pixelated print when using the laser. For the first housing, it'll be created in the design of the animated sitcom Rick and Morty. Once I'd purchased my pack of vector images for $2.42, I could get to work. It's important that I only use the black and white versions as that's the only two colors the laser will understand. We'll add the color in later on. After designing the back to my liking, I'll ensure it's aligned correctly before burning the design into the phone with the laser. It's always a good idea to run this process twice to ensure the design is fully burned in. Once complete, we can see the design was perfectly applied to the back. However, the areas burned have become transparent as the laser has precisely removed the color. While it could be left like this, it looks incomplete. I'll remove the back glass as it'll need to be cleaned off before the color is applied. Before we finish off the Rick and Morty back panel, I thought I'd make a couple more designs. After all, Rick and Morty isn't for everyone. Maybe you love retro games or just grew up with Pac-Man. After downloading some more vector images, I could design another panel. 
These graphics had to be slightly modified in Adobe Illustrator to work with the laser. The next design is actually just the original, but with a twist. I will trace out the Apple logo in the exact same position as an original housing. Then I can swap over to a blank panel where we can burn in the design. What we end up with is a transparent Apple logo. A logo we can put any colour behind. The last panel I'll be creating is another Rick and Morty design. However, this time it'll be printed on a Samsung back panel. This is much more practical as the back of a Samsung is the first part to come off. And it does so with just a little bit of heat. No laser required, making it a much easier process than the iPhone. This image of Rick and Morty is a complex vector. I had to add a white stroke around the objects in order to get all of the black lines, or areas where the laser didn't burn. This provides the print with detail, otherwise it would have just been printed as a silhouette. With all of the prints now completed, it's time they're cleaned off with alcohol to remove any remaining dust caused by the laser. All four prints have turned out spectacular. The laser is so precise, you'd think all of these came out of a factory. The last time I attempted this, I used a PNG image, and not a vector. You can see the difference of the PNG on the left and the vector on the right. With that, it's time these panels got some colour. I purchased some colour pieces of paper and got some sample squares from my local hardware store. The best thing about these is there's a whole wall of different shades to choose from, and that they're all free. But I also wanted to try out paint. Would that provide a better result or more customization? I don't know, but I decided that I would find out. Colour choice really comes down to preference. But as I have a wide selection of colours, I thought I'd show you what a few look like with our custom Apple logo panel. If this was your phone, what colour Apple would you have? Would you have something plain? Or maybe you'd fancy something a little more sparkly? Given it was a bold choice, I decided to go with it. By now, you can probably see where this is going. I'll cut a section large enough to cover the exposed area and tape it to the back. It looks a bit unprofessional, but it works, and from the outside, you can't tell. The best bit is given how thin paper is, it causes no obstruction, and the glass fits perfectly onto the phone. But what about paint? Could you colour in a graphic to make it more detailed? Well, I attempted using paint on my failed housing to find out. After applying it with a brush, I had a look from the other side and you can see all of the brush streaks. Not the look I'm going for, but if you were going for an abstract design, this might be the way to go. So with the ideal method for me being coloured paper, it was time to get to work colourising the remaining housings. While designing these, it's important to consider the areas where glue is applied. You don't want to have a design cover the entirety of the panel, as there'd be nothing left for the glue to stick to. Once I've applied all the colour I need, I can flip it over to see the end result. I don't know about you, but that's looking pretty nice. And best of all, it fits perfectly onto our iPhone XS Max frame. As you can see, it fits onto the frame perfectly, taking into consideration that there's not even any glue applied. I'll repeat the same process for our Pac-Man back panel. There are several different colours right next to each other so I've had to cut each piece individually and then tape them down. Once all is applied, we can see the end result. Yet again, it's looking pretty colourful. As for the side profile, you can see that paper takes up no space at all. For the Samsung panel, I had aimed to use multiple colours to paint in the image. However, given the poor performance of the paint, and how tiny the margins are, I decided to instead use a solid colour. You could add an image behind here if it was thin enough, although it would need to be precisely aligned. After it's installed, we're actually going to apply this S7 Edge back panel onto a real phone. But before doing so, I'll need to remove all the plastic protective film over the adhesive before it's applied to the phone. 
Looking at the side profile, you can see it's just as good as the iPhones were, with absolutely no gaps. With that, we're done. So this is it, a brand new way to customize phones in any design you like. Of course, you need access to a laser engraver and the know-how to work on phones, but it's an awesome result. Now, while I didn't assemble the iPhone back panels, you still have an idea on what's possible. I'm very excited to continue working on this and integrate this method into building more custom phones. What design would you like to see on one of my custom built phones? And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the custom tech playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.